Hey guys, so um, a while ago, like a year ago by now, anyway, I made a video on how to like make weapons in Roblox Studio. And well, now I'm probably gonna like, I'm gonna make a second one, except this one's kind of, it's gonna be a lot like the old one. Except this one, I'm gonna be using all the techniques I learned now. So it's gonna be even more advanced. I'm also gonna be using some plugins up here. And I'll put links to those in the description if you wanna download them. And a lot of them are actually really nice. But anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a cylinder, like that. I'm going to scale it up, and in the last video somebody asked how I scaled it. I just hold shift, and then just drag it, and it scales it all up like that. It just scales the entire size. I'm just going to make kind of like a one-handed sword like this. And this little handle, the uh, handguard thing, I, I made that using um, this plugin right here. And it's, this plugin is actually really nice for a lot of things. But anyway, so if I make the material like slate, because slate can look a lot like leather if you want it to. Kind of like that. Then if I go over here, the toolbox, grab like a sphere mesh. Just kind of like um, go to marketplace and search a sphere and just click on like this thing. About the first thing you see. Then if you want to like put it exactly in the right place, what you can do is just click on this go to properties which is right here and go to properties and just copy the position using control Z I mean control C not control Z then paste it into the ball and there you go now it's right in the same position as the cylinder so you can just move that back and you can just like one thing you can do with scaling as well you can do like this you can just do like that and then move it over or something but what I find to be easier for a situation like this is just kind of like hold shift, then hold control, and then scale it. And it scales it like the shift scale, except it scales it in place too. So that can be really nice for a lot of things too. And I'll just change that to like a gold color. And then I'll make it a bit bigger. Also, when I'm done with this whole thing, I'm going to scale it down to a reasonable size. It won't actually be this big. But yeah move it up all right so then with this thing to get the little black part in the outside kind of get like a grippy handle press ctrl D with this selected you can you can change the you can change the color and stuff of it and then just scale it out with shift control scale and then control scale this so you can scale both ends at the same time and you get that and if you take a Part. Let's go it up. I'm gonna do it like right there. Okay, so then I'm just gonna um kind of control D and copy this. Actually, I might change this to like three. This is if you don't know what this is, it's basically just some. Um, how much it moves by, like the interval it moves by instead. So it goes like that. I can do that. that. There we go. Okay. Then I have to select all of them individually because if I just go like this, it'll union the brown part too. And <laughs> it looks kind of weird. So I have to select each one of these parts individually by clicking one, holding control, and selecting another. You go like that. You get that kind of cool little effect. And then, take metal, this, create a new part, copy the position, paste it in. Oh, maybe. Or not. There we go. I think it's working now. There we go, okay. Not sure what's happening, but <laughs> maybe it had something to do with this actually. I don't know. Then you can kind of scale this, um, kind of like this. And then here's where um, this plugin comes in handy Archimedes 2. If I click on this, click on Z squared or whatever that means, and then click flip access. So it goes the other way. Then I can change the angle. 
I do like 30 render once, scale it down, render again, and do like 10, and scale it down, and get something like that. Then, if you want, you can go like this to have the reflect plugin. You could just do the same thing on the other side if you wanted, but eh, I'm too lazy for that. So, I'm just going to do that instead. It makes it a lot easier. Okay. And then, on this blade, I kind of made the blade a little bit thick because I was like, made the top part and then I copied and pasted it to the bottom. And I didn't really think about the fact that it might be a little bit thick, but yeah. So now, this time, I'm going to do it a little bit differently, a little bit thinner. Just, oh yeah, also you might want to, just to make it easier, you can like, select all these and union them. Oh yeah, also another cool thing with unions, well, kind of cool, just kind of an interesting thing I've learned. You select the, like, when you're selecting the things that you want to union, or whatever, the first one you select, you should select. First one you select is the one that changes like the sort of box around it. Cause look, if you if you see like the box around it, it's kind of just normal. But if I separate it and I select this one first, it aligns with that one instead of this one. It makes it kind of weird. So now I want to select like the middle one first to make it easier. Then copy the position of this and paste it, move this, let's go it out a bit, and then let's go it out this way, now we're going to want to add a wedge part, so we can go like that, I'm just kind of scale it into this to where it looks kind of like it's just attached that like naturally. And scale it out. And then um, in the last video I did this really complicated thing with unions and stuff. And this one, like, it's a little bit easier with this thing because you can go like this. I mean, the unions are still pretty much the same, but you can go like this and that makes it a lot easier. Took it like it just right and stuff. Let's scale that down. And then drag that out. And now here's where the tricky unions come in. Tricky negate and union stuff comes in. Okay. And you can go like that. So right now you're just creating a part that you want to turn like turn negative so you can like cover these parts and get rid of those, those little things that come out. So first of all, you want to set your first one like right here on this wedge and kind of move it over that. You can duplicate that if you want, kind of scale it down. And put another one right on here and scale that over there. But with this one, you're also going to want to delete all this excess material, so you're going to want to go over there too. Go way out there. Okay, get all of that. And if this doesn't make sense, what I'm basically doing, so like, if you don't understand union and gate, it's basically just, you take a part, you take another part, if I make sure collisions is off, of course, then drag them inside of each other, negate this one, and then select both of them and union them. It does that. So that I'm just basically using that to kind of refine this blade. So I'm going to select both of these, and then I'm going to negate those. Then what I can do, since I have the reflect plugin, instead of just trying to replicate this on the other side, what I can do is just select all of this, and just use the reflect tool. It makes it a lot quicker. I'm gonna just drag this over here, select the entire sword, and union it all. Except it does that. Okay, um, that means I need to scale these out more. 
Actually, I can just scale these in. That would work better. Negate those again. And you're in. And if you look at it, it kind of has like this weird shadow thing. Actually, wait. Let me change how the union is. When it has that weird shadow thing, well, let me just show you. Okay, so it has a weird shadow thing. The shading is really weird with it. When it's like that, go over here into the union's properties. Go to um, collision fidelity and select hole. Oh, whoa. Well, normally it changes the shading, but basically what that does, it changes the collision. So like with box, it basically makes it like, see this box around it? That's where you, that's that's where it collides with. So like, if I were to put it, actually, I'll just test it right now. I'll anchor it first though. So if, I'll, if I were to test it, and I just run over here, and you'll see it kind of like the collisions are really weird, and it's it's kind of weird anyway so if you don't want that then what you want to do with is just change this to hole but with this in this scenario it kind of messed up the shading so i think the problem is with that the shading is i need to select this this middle part first so it, like the box isn't like really slanted or anything weird like that so if i just select each part one by one and then you need them there we go, that looks a lot nicer. A little bit short though. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have focused a little more on the scaling of that, but whatever. It'll work. And I've got a plugins reflect and reflect it down. Since it's a union, it kind of messes up the plugin a little bit. But it's not it's not too bad because all you have to do is just rotate this around. And there you go. You got your little sword. And you can just union these. And put them in the right position because it's uncentered. And there you go. All I have to do is, like, get out a dummy. You can, like, scale it down to the dummy, group it all together, and just scale it down a little bit. So it's not so huge. Gonna get it to the right size that you want. There we go. Here's my very short bladed one handed sword. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. That's about it for this video. I'll see you later, I guess.